Okay, we're going to go over what controllability is, and then what is the W test, and then also a proof of why the W test works. So suppose we have the linear system sigma, as shown here, it's time varying. So the definition of controllability is that um, sigma is controllable over the interval t0 to t1. If we have an input signal u of t that exists, such that x at t1 equals zero for any given initial state x t naught equal x naught. So what the heck does that mean? Um, so what that means is that if we start in any initial state right here, so this would be like we have three different state variables and we start in some random state, that means that at a finite time t1, we can drive all of these states to zero at the same time. Um, we don't really care what the states do afterwards. They don't have to stay at zero. They can do whatever they want. Um, controllability is all about if we can get the states to go to zero at time t1. So here's the theorem behind the W test. It says that our system sigma is controllable. That's the same thing as saying that this Gramian matrix defined here is invertible. Okay, so to prove this, um, we need to show two things. We need to show that um, if W, if the Gramian matrix is invertible, that implies that the system is controllable. And then later we're going to show that um, if the system is controllable, that means that the Gramian has to be invertible. So this is the first way. So we're showing that if um, the Gramian is invertible, then sigma must be controllable. So what we're saying is um, we have a signal u of t that exists that forces all of the states to zero at time t1. That's what controllability means. So we're going to choose u t to be this expression. And this is just from the textbook. Um, so remember that the solution to a linear time varying system is what's shown below right here. We have x of t is phi of t t naught x naught plus the integral from t naught to t1 of phi t1 comma sigma um, b sigma u sigma d sigma. So um, if we want x at t1, we just replace all the t's with t1's and we get the expression shown right there. So if we just plug in for u of sigma, which we defined above, you see that we get this expression shown right here. This is just u sigma. This, this whole part right here is u sigma. Then we're going to make a very clever substitution. Um, so using the transition property, we can rewrite this transition function as the product of these two transition functions. You see the t naughts are the same in the middle, so they go away. So doing that, um, we see that x of t1 equals this minus this transition function times this expression, uh, then we're going to pull out this constant Gramian matrix and then this constant state vector. Those are constant, so they can be pulled out of the integral, no problem. So we notice that we have this, which is actually equal to the Gramian. That's the Gramian. And then this is the inverse of the Gramian. And because we were assuming that the Gramian was invertible, this guy and that guy cancel to the identity matrix, and we're just left with this. And clearly, that equals zero. So, so that's the proof. So just coming back up a little bit, we assumed that the Gramian matrix was invertible, and we showed that sigma is controllable. And remember that sigma is controllable when we can find an input signal that sets all of the states to zero at some finite time t1. Okay, so this is the second part of the proof. We're going to show that um, the Gramian must be invertible when sigma is controllable. So this one's a little bit more difficult to show. Um, we're going to do it with the proof by contradiction. So we're going to assume that the Gramian is not invertible and then show this leads to a contradiction. So we have, if the Gramian is not invertible, 
this Gramian does not have full rank. That's because the Gramian is square, and for a square matrix, if your square matrix is not invertible, that means that the, the matrix is not full rank. So because the Gramian is not full rank, that means that a non-zero vector Q must exist where if we multiply this Gramian by Q, right here, um, this Gramian times Q must ex ex exist where this guy times that guy equals zero. Um, so that's equivalent to saying that Q transpose times the Gramian times Q equals a zero. So, so what is this Q transpose times the Gramian times Q? Well, we know the Gramian, so we can just write this guy like this. This is Q times the Gramian times Q, and that equals zero. And I'm going to call that equation star. Um, so the first thing to notice is that this expression right here, we can rewrite this as the, the integrand right here can be rewritten as Q transpose times the transition function times B sigma squared. Um, and that's because like if you have any vector, um, let, let's say your vector is called um, Z, right? So if you have Z transpose times Z, that's equal to uh, Z times Z transpose equals the norm of Z like that. So, so here we see that this, this first part, we can think of this as Z, right? So that's Z, this is Z transpose, and so this is the norm. And as we know, um, the norm of a vector is always non-negative. So it can be equal to zero if this is zero, but it can never, this can never be negative. It's always going to be either zero or it's going to be positive. Um, so in order for this whole integral to equal zero, um, it requires that this expression right here is zero for all sigma between t0 and t1. Okay, so because sigma is controllable, that means that an input signal u must exist where we can send the states to zero at time t1 for any given x0. Um, so if we write that out, using the solution to a linear time varying um, system of equations right here. Um, we have xt1 equals the transition function times x0. We're going to call x0 q, and we can do that because this must hold for any arbitrary x0, so x0 is q is fine, um, times this right here, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply both sides. We're going to left multiply both sides by this transition function. And when we do that, this times that, that's going to be the identity, so that goes away. And then this times that, um, we, we see that the T1 right here is on the right. We have this T1 on the left right there. And so that's going to make this new transition function. So we have Q, 0 equals Q plus this guy right here. And this might look familiar. So... If we move Q to the other side, multiply by minus one, um, then we're gonna multiply both sides by Q transpose. And when we do that, we see that Q transpose times Q is minus this integral Q times the transition times B times U D sigma. But we notice that this right here, this is zero. Um, and that was that was defined above. If I, if I can pull that back up, we see right here. For this star equation to be true, we showed that Q transpose times the transition times B must be zero for all sigma between T naught and T1. And if that's true, then over this whole integral from T naught to T1, this is just going to be a zero. So we're integrating zero. So that means that this whole integral has to equal zero. Um, and that's a problem. 
because this q squared right here, this has to be, q, q is not zero. So q squared, well, the magnitude of q, or the norm of q, I should say, is non-zero. This, this value is positive. So a positive number does not equal zero. Like th this, this right here, this is a contradiction. So what we've shown is that the Gramian being not invertible and the system being controllable, um, that's a contradiction. So this is the W test. The W test says that um, sigma is controllable if and only if the Gramian is invertible. So by showing the Gramian is not invertible, we are showing the system is not controllable and vice versa.